My name is Darlene. Welcome to Stand Strong, a fun, educational, inspirational, and motivational show about people overcoming life's obstacles. Hello, welcome to Stand Strong. I'm your host, Darlene Luff, and I'm really looking forward to today's episode. Today we're going to be touching base on ONH, which is a, vi is a condition that affects one's vision. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our guest. I'm very excited for you to meet her, Amanda. Welcome, Amanda. Hi, Darlene. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Um, <laughs> would you explain to our viewers exactly what is ONH and tell our viewers a little bit about yourself. ONH is short for optic nerve hypoplasia, Oof. which sounds very scary. Um, it's a condition that mostly affects the eyes. Uh, it means that the optic nerves or the wire between the eye and the brain is underdeveloped. So. I can see fine in my eyes, but the, the actual signals from my eyes aren't getting to my brain properly. Um, wow. Yeah. Is this something that you were born with? Yes. It's a congenital condition, which means from birth. Uh, it affects both my eyes. Um, it can affect just one eye in some children, but it's usually both eyes, I believe. Uh, and it's one of the most common causes of childhood blindness in developed nations. Wow, really? Mm -hmm. Now, now you said you were born with it. Um, how did it affect you as you were growing up, as you were getting older? Did your parents know right away that you had a visual problem? Um, my mom knew pretty quickly that there was something going on with my eyes. She said basically as soon as I was born, she noticed that I didn't make eye contact with her. Um, but she wasn't really sure because I was the first child, so she didn't really think too much about it. Uh, and then around two months old, I was diagnosed because they started to realize that it really wasn't quite right. And they brought me to a doctor and they diagnosed me through an eye exam, which is when they dilate the eyes and look in the back of the eye. Uh, and the optic disc, so like the end of the optic nerve, was just a little on the small side and they realized that it just wasn't the right size for um, where I was developmentally, so. Wow, is there any, anything that they could have done or still can do to correct it? Not really, no. Um, I do wear glasses, but it's not for the optic nerve hypoplasia. It's because of just like, how most people wear glasses for their eyes being slightly off shapen or something of the sort. Um, so that's why I wear the glasses. It doesn't help the ONH at all. Uh, they have some theories going on about ways that they could possibly help ONH in the future, but they're currently not proven. Wow. Is it something that's hereditary? Um, they're not completely sure, but at this point they're thinking likely not. Uh, it's Something that happens during the pregnancy is what they're thinking currently. Wow. Now, growing up, how, how did, well, because you were born with it, so it's not like you um, were a person that had vision and then lost it and had to learn to retrain yourself in life situations. So from, from a young age, you were used to it. Was it difficult growing up and, you know, going to school and sort of doing things that other children without a disability would do? It's interesting because um, a lot of things that, l looking back, were likely more difficult for me. At the time, I just thought it was normal. Mm -hmm. um, so like, for example, um, playing on the playground, I couldn't really see how far down the stairs were or where exactly the kids were. I couldn't recognize people from farther away, so I couldn't recognize my friends very easily. So it was just a lot of coping mechanisms that I created over time, little tr tricks to act normal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, um, in, in doing so, do you have a lot of support system? Um, when I was very young, there wasn't a lot of support systems in place. Um, there was, of course, my family, but there wasn't a lot of information for them to have. Uh, so they didn't have a whole lot of information to go off of to help me. 
um, when I was very young, the, um, the way the school treated it, the, there were a lot of different teachers in and out of my life that were supposed to be helping me. And some of them did an amazing job, but were just like pulled away too quickly. And then others weren't really sure how to approach the situation because it was so strange, um, like because of all the different things going on. Um, when you were in school, were you in um, amongst the regular population, or did you have to take special classes? I was amongst the regular classes, but I had a vision teacher or a teacher of the visually impaired, um, which would t pull me out of classes. Um, in my case, it was about once a week, uh, and we would do activities and uh, learn about skills and tools that I would need. Um, and I also had a mobility instructor, which would be someone who would teach me how to use uh, a long white cane and would teach me how to navigate in an environment. Because those are things that most, most children learn uh, from watching other children. And mm -hmm. I w didn't have that opportunity. Now, growing up um, from elementary school to high school, did you find it more difficult in high school Definitely. Um, as a child, there was a lot of stuff that I could just sort of get away with, not fully understanding or not being able to do because I was a child. And then it got to the point where kids were walking around, uh, going downtown, driving, things that I just wasn't in a place where I was able to do yet. Um, some of these things like walking uptown, it just came later for me because I had to be trained on how to do that safely. Mm -hmm. um, and other things like driving, I just wasn't able to do because mm -hmm. of my vision. Now, now you're an adult. Um, might I ask, um, do you work? I do work. I work with children. And what is it that you do? That's exciting. I'm a personal care assistant to a special needs uh, teenager. Oh my goodness, that's fabulous. <laughs> and and a special needs, do they... Uh, is what impairment do they have? Are they? It's a fairly complex, uh, rare condition. Um, it's a genetic condition, so it's that's... medically fragile and special needs. Wow, that's remarkable. Now, do you find that um, the type of work that you do is it because of your disability that you decided to go and help others? Oh yes, definitely. Um, I started volunteering with a program with children with visual impairments when I was 11, so as soon as I was old enough. Wow. Uh, and it just became this amazing experience where the older kids were helping me and I was helping the younger kids and we were all just like feeding off each other's energy and helping each other understand the world that we were in a lot better. And it was such a huge influence on my life that I decided that I really wanted to be that influence on other people as well. That's amazing. Congratulations. I'm going to cheers to that. <laughs> Congratulations. That's amazing to take such a, um, an experience and turn it around and be a positive influence. It's remarkable. Thank you. Now, in, in getting to know you and speaking to you, um, it's my understanding that you have taken your experiences and wrote them in the form of a children's book. I did, and I happen to have a copy with me. Um, it's called Can I See? And it's about a young boy who's in first grade, Gavin, who he has roughly the same condition, the same problems as I do. And in the book, he is exploring a new tool that he gets from his TVI, his teacher of the visually impaired, and exploring this new world of just being different because he didn't fully understand it before then that he was different from the other children. That's amazing. Is it based on your story, or is, is the little boy someone that you know, or just um, a character that you decided to base yourself on? Um, it's definitely partially based on my life, and it's also partially based off of the children that I work with. Uh, a lot of them go through this period uh, of their life where they, they're getting all these new tools, and they're struggling to understand exactly how to deal with uh, kids asking questions and not knowing what it is. And some kids think it's cool and other kids will bully them. And so I wrote this to help them understand what they were going to or are going through over their elementary school years. 
That is amazing. That is remarkable. I, I can't wait to read it. I did sign it for you as well. Oh, thank you so much. It says, thank you, Darlene, for this lovely opportunity. You are amazing. So inspiring. Amanda McCoy. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Now, I get very emotional. <laughs> I promise I'm not going to cry, but this is very oh, touching. <laughs> This is very touching. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, you mentioned um, in the book, what you were just speaking of the book, of certain tools. Yes. Um, what type of tools? And do you have anything with you that you can share with our viewers? Exactly is, um, is like you, you have glasses on. Mm -hmm. Now, are you able to, to read with the glasses, or is there something special that you need to use? Mattering the text size, so how big the writing is, I will oftentimes use a, a tool called a dome magnifier. It's kind of, it's likely hard to see on screen due to the fact that it's uh, clear, but um, it's a magnifier that goes over a page. Would you like to try to use the book and sure. see if maybe you can... Kind of show them. It goes bit. over the page and enlarges the text and makes it a little easier to read for visually impaired children. Wow. That's remarkable. And do you use that quite often? Um, I enjoy having larger text to start with, honestly, mm -hmm. because the glare on this can hurt my eyes. But it is a very important tool, especially in a child's life when they're still learning exactly how to go about um, learning to use their tools and what their vision can and can't see. That's amazing. Now you said when you, when you, well, first I want to ask you before it slips in my mind, um, you did all the illustrations in this book, correct? Yes. That's remarkable. I mean, <laughs> there, I don't know if you could see, she was just speaking of the microfine glass, right? Is magnifying that what you're glass. Magnifying yes. glass. And this is it. And this is the illustration, a part of it. Um, it's amazing. Was it difficult being visually impaired to do the illustration? I've always loved drawing and loved art. Um, there have been small things that I've had to adjust and learn to cope with when it comes to my vision and art. Um, I mean, I've definitely dipped my nose in some oil paints before. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely gotten some pastel on my chin. <laughs> so I've just been that close to the peg. But it's things that um, I'm able to deal with and things that I'm able to find ways around. So it's just a matter of trial and error. This is what an amazing accomplishment. I mean, to take your, it, it, rather than sit back and feel sorry for yourself, to take your experiences and, and just say, I'm not going to feel sorry for myself. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to help many other people going through it, adults and children, and then write a children's book about it. And just and it's my understanding that you're also a guest speaker. You you do speaking in certain things to bring awareness to that. Is Where this correct? I can, yes. Yes. Um, I understand. If you could pull up the website, she there's contact information. If yep. you're interested to learning more about uh, O N H and Amanda and her children's book, there it is, um, www.amandamccoyart.com, correct? Mm -hmm. um, if you want to learn more, that's exciting. Now, there's, uh, you had mentioned in our earlier conversation, you're not able to drive, obviously, right. and that you, you have special things that you need to use to get around. Yes. And um, one being, do you call it a cane or yes. a special? Did you bring that with you? I did. I keep it when sitting. Um, I have a folding cane, so I fold it up and I put it under the chair. That's what we are taught to do as children, um, learning to use these canes. So it's folded up, and it basically... There's an elastic band around it. You pull the elastic off, and you can unfold it to full height. Wow. And now, do you use that? I noticed there's, there's a, it looks like a ball on the bottom. Yes. Do you count with that, or is, how, how do you, does that help you because you can't see objects very, very well? There, it, this particular tip is called a rolling marshmallow tip. It's a little worn down right now because I've been using it for a while. Um, 
but so this kind of rolls back and forth, back and oh, forth on wow. the ground, and um, it's used for a cane technique called constant contact. Some people do tap the cane, and that's um, two-point tuck. That's a different cane te technique that I'm not as comfortable with, though mm -hmm. I have tried before. Uh, they use different cane tips, and it's basically all the cane techniques are basically used to feel the ground in front of you so that you can see if there's any dips in the ground or curbs, and also it'll bump into something before you do. <laughs> <laughs> now, have you used this type of cane since you were a little girl? Um, I personally started learning to use the cane at 12 years old. 12, wow. Um, most children start learning when they're toddlers, but because I was able to navigate fairly well, they decided to um, not have me start using one right away, and it was only when I was older and started struggling to walk around independently um, in public did they decide to uh, start having me train with the cane. Was it difficult being 12 years old to learn it was, it was strange, certainly. Um, I had some friends at the time from the program that I previously talked about that did use canes, so I understood what it was used for and how it was used roughly. Um, but it was certainly strange to be walking around with it uh, when I never needed it before. Uh, it's only in the past few years that I've started using it pretty much everywhere because it's taken me a long time to get used to. Mm -hmm. um, may I ask how old you are? I am 19. She's a baby. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, my goodness. Um, are you still in school? Do you yeah. go to college? Yep. I'm and in, what is it that you go to school for? I'm in college for illustration. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Next time I need an illustrator. <laughs> call that's me. That's fabulous. <laughs> I'll call you. Um, that's fabulous. Now, are you planning on writing another book? Yes, definitely. I'm currently working on um, a middle grade novel. It, with the same characters. I'd like to have um, quite a few books just narrating different parts of a visually impaired person's life uh, for the different phases that these children are going through so that they have someone who understands them at any level that they're wow. at. Wow. That's incredible. So a series of books. Yes. That's incredible. That's amazing. How, how much longer do you have for school? Um, I'm a sophomore currently, a first semester sophomore, so I have two more years after this year. And may I ask where it is you attend? Um, it's Montserrat College of Art. Oh, very yeah. good. That must be fun. It is. It's I, a very small school, very personal, so the uh, teachers and the staff there have been very, very good about my visual impairment and helping me uh, access the material. That's amazing. That is Really exciting. Yeah. C congratulations. Definitely. I mean, thank you. I can't even imagine, but to turn all of that around and make it such a positive thing and to continue to do so through your writings, you're going to help so many people. It's a pleasure to have you on my show. Thank I you. I mean, Stand Strong is a fun educational, motivational show about people overcoming all kinds of obstacles and you are an example of, of overcoming. It, Thank it, you. It is amazing. Do it's you have... interesting to me because um, optic nerve hypoplasia can affect multiple areas of the body as well. And it affects, for me, just my eyes. So I look at these other kids who have problems um, with their pituitary glands or brain malformations or... Um, hormone deficiencies and it's just amazing to watch these kids going through not only wow. what I went through but more and pushing through and coming through um, amazing people. Wow so it doesn't in certain people like you said it doesn't just affect the eyes yeah. it affects the rest of your body? Yeah. Wow. They don't know exactly what it's caused by or how it's connected but it's definitely connected. Oh wow that's incredible that's amazing. Do you have any advice for someone out there watching who might be going through something similar or, or a difficult time, um, be it young or old? Do you have a positive uh, thing you would like to share? I'd say main two things would be find someone who 
somewhat at least understands. You can do that online or in your local community, going through schools for the blind to find programs for your child or going online and finding a support group or um, just calling up friends and seeing if they know anyone who's going through something similar to you. Because having someone with you that understands it to an extent is so, so important to helping you process it. And then after that, I'd say trying to find your community and then um, be involved in the community that you are now a part of because uh, it can be hard at first to accept where you are, but getting involved and seeing all these other people and working not just for yourself but for them can feel so empowering and make you feel like you actually have some control over the situation. Well, that's very good advice. Thank you very much for sharing. Do you have an ultimate dream once, once you graduate? Um, I, do you do work in the community now? And is there something further in the future you'd like to do to bring awareness to this? Um, I definitely want to keep producing books, not just on the subject of visual impairments, but having characters in the background or side characters or just characters where it's very um, nonchalantly mentioned that they're visually impaired or disabled or part of a minority group because that's a type of representation that currently isn't around in a lot of media. Um, and as I become more comfortable in there, I'd like to give back to the blind community and work with more children and help them go through these stages that, that most of them will go through. That's amazing. Now, you had mentioned that you work with, with um, a young child. And um, what, what type of things do you do on a daily basis with this young person? Um, well, she is special needs. She um, is not very high functioning, so it's a lot of s simple toys and games um, and keeping her safe and uh, making sure that her medical needs are taken care of. Um, and every child I work with, I work with very individually. So with her, it's very um, focused on the skills that she needs to learn and the types of things that she enjoys. Whereas if I'm working with someone who is like a visually impaired child and purely just visually impaired, it will be mostly focused on toys and games that is at their level and things that they are able to take in a little, a little easier. And I like to try to sneak some education in there <laughs> if, if I can manage it. Some of them are very clever. <laughs> now, is it, is it more helpful both for your um, visual impairment and the children that you help being, um, vis do, they, do they understand that you too have uh, an impairment? Yes, I'm very open about that. Um, and I often end up talking with them very openly about their situations currently. They tend to open up more to me than they do to the other volunteers um, on the subject of visual impairments because they know I'm going to understand it. And mm -hmm. it's not just going to be, well, have you talked to your parents? Because that's a very important thing that needs to be addressed and needs to be done, but it doesn't always feel like it's, you're being listened to when it's the same response every time. So that's I try amazing. to say, yeah, I've been through that, and I did this, and this is what I wish I would have done, and actually having a discussion about it. That's amazing. What's the youngest person you've worked with? Um, the, the youngest person I've worked with as a volunteer would be five years old. Oh, um, wow. The youngest person that I've been in the program with and helped out with was about three. Wow. And the oldest? Um, the oldest would have been about 14. Wow, 14. And then is, the special child different? I work with now is 16. 16? Yeah. Well, do you find the age differences in the children? Do you, do you, uh, is there a difference? It, yeah. You know? Yeah, there's definitely a difference. Um, just like any child, uh, a visually impaired child or a disabled child in general will go through different stages in their life and learn new things throughout the way along the way um, and 
I've learned a lot of the different stages as well um, of how people deal with their, their, their visual impairment and their disability. It can be a long process even when you are born with it because at first you don't really realize and then one day you just kind of come into the realization that you're different and it can be a lot to deal with as a, as a, a six-year-old child. You're remarkable and, and I have to say you're an angel. For, for what you do, it's, you. it's amazing. And I like to give gifts to my guests. <laughs> so I have a little something for you. Um, it's just a little appreciation. It's a certificate of oh, appreciation. Stand strong. <laughs> um, just to say thank you for coming on and sharing your amazing story. I'd love to have you come back and fo <laughs> keep following you on, <laughs> on your, your book journeys. Yeah. The book is adorable. And thank you so much. This is for you. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for the book. And is there anything you would like to um, leave with our viewers today um, on the importance of remaining positive um, no matter what obstacle is thrown at you? I'd say no matter what's thrown at you, you're still a human being just like anyone else. And if you were going to walk into someone else's life and and see them going through something, you would comfort them, so why don't you comfort yourself? Wow, bravo. I'm gonna cheers to that. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Your parents did an amazing job with you. You turned out to be such a remarkable person. It is a blessing to have met you. I, I, I can't even imagine. Thank you. I mean, I wish you the very best. I'd love to have you come back on my show. Anytime, anytime you want. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I, I, are you in the works of writing a new book now? I am. I'm working on um, a middle grade novel with the same characters. So as middle grade Facebook. is like sixth grade? Yeah, roughly around fourth to seventh grade. Well, we'll have to have you come back and, <laughs> and uh, share your story. Thank it, you. It is, um, I, I'm, I'm very, very honored to have met you. Thank I, you. I have to say thank you very much for coming on. Thank you for um, having me. We'll definitely will have you back. <laughs> Without a doubt, we will have you back. There's so much that we can share. I mean, your books, your speaking, your job, um, schooling, everything that you do. I would love the viewers to get to know you more and more and learn more about ONH. Yeah. ONH? Yes. And the proper <laughs> spelling for that, how, how do you say it? Properly? Optic nerve hypoplasia. Optic nerve hypoplasia. There you thank go. Thank <laughs> you so much for sharing. Um, very much thank you. Thank you. And thank you all viewers at home for joining us once again for an amazing show. We look forward to sharing our next show with you. Till next time, remember to always stand strong. <laughs>